Hi, I'm uh, Ben Wellington. I'm a visiting professor uh, at the Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, New York uh, in the Urban Planning Program and also the founder and writer behind the blog iQuant New York, uh, a data science and policy blog that looks at uh, New York City through the eyes of data. Uh, today I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I became a data storyteller um, and what that has meant for, for me and for New York. Uh, it started with uh, my wife, who's an urban planner, going to take a class at Pratt in statistics. Now, like most stats classes, they were done in a textbook with made up problems and made up data trying to answer questions. Uh, this bothered me because stats can be so much more, right? It doesn't have to be un uninteresting, it doesn't have to be fake. We're in a city with real problems and real data and we're teaching students fake problems with fake data. This felt sort of wrong to me. Um, I approached the school and, and pitched a redesigned statistics class based all on real public data. And uh, that way it would be applied and exciting for the students. And uh, they went for it. So as I got into this class, I had to make homework assignments. And what was really exciting at the time, this was about five years ago in uh, 2012, um, what was really exciting is the open data movement. Now the open data movement has since then really taken off, but it was in its early years. And what it is, it's the idea that all data that the government makes should be public, unless there's a reason for it not to be public. Now today, there is data out there, but imagine if the default of data was public, how that would change things, how, how the amount of information in the world would really explode. Um, so this is starting to happen in our cities around the world and in states and in federal governments, um, in countries, all over the place. In New York, what I found is this really rich playground of data sets that really no one had ever looked at, right? Uh, and I needed to make interesting homework assignments for students, so I started to analyze. As I found interesting stories, uh, I posted some of them on a little Tumblr blog called iQuant New York. And I noticed that as I did, they got picked up by different media outlets and spread around. And, and this became kind of, and, you know, uh, uh, more and more exciting as I, as I planned this class and got uh, all these posts sort of posted around. So I'm going to tell you a story about one of those posts that um, I was pretty excited about and, and really talks to the impact of data. Um, this is a case where it turns out that in New York City, uh, you can actually park in front of pedestrian ramps. And the reason you can do that unless there is a crosswalk or a stop sign or a traffic control device of some sort. So if you have a mid-block uh, little uh, ramp, pedestrian ramp, in a sidewalk, you can actually cross, this, you, you, you can cross the street there, but somebody can park there. The reason is that it's not a very safe place to cross the street if there's no stop sign, so they let cars park there. So I parked in one of these spots and I got a parking ticket, which was frustrating. Uh, I then pled not guilty, but I lost which didn't make a lot of sense because I didn't break the law. I appealed and I lost again. It started to get a little frustrating. Uh, so at that point, you know, instead of just complaining and going on with my life, I was able, because of open data, to download data from New York City to understand this problem. So I downloaded all parking tickets in all of New York that were given in front of pedestrian ramps. And I found the 250 top locations for these tickets. And I started to go through Google Maps and look at each of them. And what I noticed is that they were all legal places to park that in fact it wasn't just me getting these tickets, it was a systemic problem. It turned out that New York was giving out up to maybe $3 million a year in legally parked cars getting tickets. Uh, as I wrote about this, I, you know, before I would have just been a person complaining, but now I was a person complaining with data. Because as governments give data, it's really the democratization of data. It allows anyone, citizens, to just see what's happening in the government and make a point. Once I analyzed this and I posted it online and spoke with the police department, they understood their error and they took a few weeks, but they came back and they created a new program where they would retrain all their officers and give uh, refunds to people across the city who had been getting these tickets wrongly. Um, as I said, before open data, this wouldn't be possible. We all just have to kind of you know, live our life. But with open data, you can take any issue and understand it deeply and really advocate for yourself in a new and exciting way. And I'm excited to see where that goes in the future.